G'day legends. Now, regular viewers of the channel may have seen a video I did a short while ago on winching tips and techniques. In that video, I went through the basics of winch recoveries and how to get yourself or your mate unbogged using your four wheel drives winch. If you haven't watched that video yet, I've put a link in the description or up in the top right corner of the screen. It goes through the fundamentals of four wheel drive winch recoveries and it's definitely worth a watch because it shows you how to make any winch recovery easier and more effective. So this time around, Mitch and I are out here on the tracks to run the winch rope out one more time to show you advanced winching techniques. Now, these tricks, tips and techniques that we're just about to show you may not be the kind of thing that you use every time you go four-wheel driving. And in fact, you may only ever use them once or twice in your four-wheel drive career. But I guarantee if you're ever that bogged that you do need them, you're gonna be glad that you know them. And of course, before we get stuck into the thick of things today, take a moment, hit the subscribe button and that notification bell because we are constantly hammering our channel with cracking four-wheel driving and camping tips, tricks, and techniques videos, and I guarantee you won't want to miss any of them. All done? Sweet. Okay, let's get into it with the first technique. Okay, so as you can see, that's a big old rock step that the Ranger is trying to winch itself up and over right there. Now, full disclosure, that winch will have enough power to pull the Ranger up and over that rock step right there. But what I want to do is take the opportunity to set up what's known as a triple line winch recovery. One of the worst things you can ever do to your winch in terms of longevity and service life is keep trying to winch in when you're at a point where the car is bogged and the winch isn't pulling it in any further. When you're doing that, what you're doing is you're sending all the power from your alternator through your battery straight into very specific contact points on the winch's electric motor. And that's guaranteed to burn it out. So instead, if you ever get to a situation where you find that the winch isn't pulling the vehicle forwards, that's where you use a snatch block. And in the previous video, I showed you how to do a double line pull where we put a snatch block up there, run the winch rope up around the snatch block and back to the car. That dramatically reduces the load on the winch. But what happens when even a double line pull isn't enough? Well, you can go to a triple line pull. And I'm gonna show you how. So the basic theory of what we're gonna do here is we're gonna run the winch rope up to the anchor point through the first snatch block, back down to the car, through the second snatch block, back up to the anchor point again. A couple of key things we're gonna have to make sure we do here when we set it up. Make sure the rope doesn't cross itself over, bind up on itself. And of course, we're probably not gonna have enough winch rope to be able to get up and back and up again. Definitely not gonna have enough winch rope to do that without the use of these winch extension straps, which are just gonna let us move the anchor point down the hill closer to the car. So let's do it. So we're connected to the car. For the final anchor point, where we're gonna connect the winch hook to, we're gonna use the second winch extension strap, but I'm actually gonna to go to a different tree. Now the whole key point that we've gotta remember here is when we're setting this up, we don't want the winch rope to cross itself back over, bind up on itself, wear, drag, that sort of thing. The winch is still pulling dead forward to this perfect tree that we've got right here. It's going back to that second snatch block it's actually okay for us to then run the final anchor point all the way out to this tree. As you can imagine, what's controlling the direction of the winch recovery is not this anchor point over here, it's this one here. So let's set it up. Don't forget to stop and readjust your winch stamper whenever you need to. Always, always safety first. Now you'll see how slowly the winch is spooling in right now, but it's not because the winch is running out of power, it's the absolute opposite effect. It's like going into four wheel drive low range versus high range. In low range you can only go a certain speed but you've got heaps of torque, in high range you can go heaps faster but there's not as much torque. We're in low range with the winch right now. Drive now, just drive forward and stop there, stop there. Thank you. 
So this right here is not a comfortable situation, but crazily enough, it's not an uncommon one either. Four-wheel drive parked on the edge of a track, turns out the ground was a lot softer than I thought it was. All it's done is it slid straight down into the ditch and it's sitting on the diffs. Now, if we just put a winch on the front or the back and try and winch forwards, we're pretty much never gonna get up and out of that ditch. So what we're gonna do is use a snatch block to change the direction of the winch pull. Instead of running a winch line straight from the Ranger to the back of the MUX here, what we're gonna do is run a snatch block over that side of the track. The winch rope will come out through the snatch block across to the back of the MUX. That way, when we winch in, instead of pulling backwards, it's gonna pull sideways. It's gonna pull the back of the MUX up onto the track. Let's see how it works. The other reason you'd want to change the direction of the winch line is if you're recovering another vehicle around a sharp corner of a track or another obstacle like a large rock. In that scenario, winching directly from the vehicle to your bull bar could pull the stuck vehicle into a worse, potentially damaging situation. The trick here is to select a suitable tree or other anchor point that will pull the stuck vehicle in the exact direction it's supposed to move. And at the same time, allow the rope to enter or exit the winch straight on. It all comes down to that mighty snatch block. So this recovery technique here is known as a slingshot winch. So for a moment, let's just pretend that the Ranger doesn't have a winch. So what we do here is the vehicle with the winch behind the bog vehicle, you get that off to the side of the track as much as you possibly can. That's what we've done with the MUX. Then we've run the winch rope all the way up past the bog vehicle to a snatch block and a good solid anchor point in front in the direction we want to winch, and then back to the bog vehicle to a proper recovery point. Then it's just a case of starting everything up. The bog vehicle drives just a little bit to try and assist with the winch, and you'll see the slingshot effect in action. Let's check it out. So the recovering vehicle, the one with the winch, you've got to get it off to the side of the track as much as you can. Usually pretty awkward, but we managed to in this case. We sort of anchored it as well against this big, conveniently placed rock. It's just gonna help make sure that the bog vehicle toes forwards and that the recovering vehicle stays exactly where it is. Alrighty, let's do it. Copy, all good to go. The recovering vehicle should always remain stationary. Don't be tempted to reverse downhill as you spool the winch in. You put extra unneeded strain on the various components involved in the recovery. The driver of the stuck vehicle should use light throttle to help the winch, but be careful not to use too much throttle. In that scenario, you'll increase the possibility of overrunning the rope and then shock loading the winch as the rope tightens back up again. So this last advanced winching technique is all about something that we all need to do at one stage or other, and that's a bit of track clearing. Now, generally speaking, a tree that size that's fallen over a track, you're probably gonna attack it with your ax or with your chainsaw if you've got them. But I'm just gonna show you a quick little trick to making track clearing with your winch so much more effective. See, if I'd pulled up just here, hooked the winch straight to that tree and pulled this way, all it would have done is pulled the tree right into the middle of the track. So once again, I'm making use of the mighty snatch block. We've run it over to an anchor point on the opposite side of the track. That way, when I winch in, what I'm gonna do is pull the tree right across to the other side of the track. Let's see how good it works. If the tree's sitting firm against the ground, then the best way of securing the winch rope to the tree is to use a drag chain. A tree trunk protector isn't ideal in this scenario as you'll likely damage the strap by grating it against the tree or across a rocky track. Of course, if the tree's sitting half up in the air, then you're fine to wrap the tree trunk protector directly around it. So there you go tricks to get more out of your winch. And like I said earlier on, you may not use those techniques every time you go forward driving, but the first time you have to use any of them, you'll be so glad that you know them. Look, just before I go, I wanna leave you with one serious parting thought. When it comes to winching, any type of four-wheel drive recoveries, safety has got to be the name of the game. Four drives weigh up to what, three tons, three and a half tons in some cases. You can imagine the forces involved with a bogged four wheel drive, whether it's in mud or jammed up against a rock, that winch is pulling at its absolute limits. So you've got to have a healthy respect for what a winch can do and for what can go wrong. And remember that safety has got to always be the number one priority. 
What do you reckon? Any tricks that I've missed? What's your favorite winch recovery technique? Drop it in the comments below. And remember, hit that like button, the subscribe button, and the notification bell, because I don't want you to miss out on any of the cracking tips and tricks videos that we've got coming up. Catch you next time.